Welcome back everyone. Thanks for joining me for another episode. In the previous episode, I got down to work of uh, cleaning the boat and starting to work on the engine. In this episode, I start working on some of the uh, lifelines that are on the boat, uh, switching them out from old rusty wire ones uh, to switching to Dyneema line, as well as uh, working on the engine a bit more and just getting down to normal life on a boat, like making pancakes. Today's project, I'm going to be uh, changing out the lifelines on this boat. Uh, they're uh, not in a way that can be tensioned properly, so I wanted to get uh, them replaced as well as there's no proper gate openings. It's a great first project to get me uh, used to splicing and working with uh, ropes, especially Dyneema. And I'm also going to be removing the netting that's on the boat as well. Um, it's not necessary for me and I find it gets uh, a little bit in the way. And my friend who has a sailboat and a dog definitely could use them. So Rob, they're headed your way. You can see how loose the uh, lifeline is, but also that there's no actual functioning gate here. This is just kind of hanging loose. And uh, these old wire ones uh, definitely need to be replaced. I like to hold it this way, well, it'll be backwards for you, but so that way I can remember that what I just went through goes back in, and where this goes back in determines the size of the eye. So this is where I can double check. Now you can, of course, mark it with a uh, marking pen beforehand, but I find this uh, just is a really nice reassuring way to figure out exactly where you want to put that eye, and then I can uh, put it right where I want it. In this case with the thimble, I like to have it a little snugger than I need uh, because there's a bit of stretch and then I can uh, push it in there a bit. And then I just need to go through back this way. For a real actual tutorial on something like this, I highly recommend um, watching Rigging Doctor. He does a way better job of explaining what's going on and uh, has way more details of the why of things. So it's really, really a good one. So check his videos out. So remember we'd gone through and now we're going to go through back in the same direction. With the other eye, and we're going to pull the eye all the way through. There, because we just went in and twisted in the same direction, we've untwisted what we did in that other step. And now we have a completely locked splice. Because it goes in, let me open it up here a bit, it goes through itself, around, and then through itself again, it just automatically locks. So now I just need to bury the tail all the way deep on the inside. that through. Now I want to make sure that this gets really tight to tidy up this end. Just gonna snip that up. And then I'm just gonna taper this which is now going to be the core so the transition from where there's two lines back into the single braid is uh, much more smooth and as far as I understand it aids in strength. So I'm just gonna pop out some strands. Sharp knife on a cutting board, then I can actually start to 
cut these lines off. Just it slowly longer length. Okay, so you can see that it slowly tapers down. So when I milk the cover back on, you can see all those loose ends from the tail just get pulled right back on in, back into the cover. And there you can see we have a nice smooth transition leading back down to the single braid. So the splice goes down to right about there. So here towards the bow we can look at one of the completed lifelines. You can see here is where the eye splice ends as well as the thimble is there and then I used a different section of Dyneema and then did a lashing here along and so this is where I can tension uh, the lifeline. You can see on these uh, handrails, um, after I washed it, it was just revealed as bare wood. Before this, it was actually darker, um, and I didn't realize the uh, finish had been completely worn off over the years. Um, but yeah, I just scrubbed it and got all the decades of dirt off, and as the other side reveals, then they uh, turn out real nice. Now this is still wet, so it's a little extra glossy. I'll probably have to do a few coats before this uh, is going to be completely finished as it's going to be pretty darn thirsty wood. You can see the kitchen of course uh, that still is going to need a lot of work yet. Yeah I'll probably have to sand that down in order to get the water stains out. So you can see uh, after just one coat it's already looking pretty good. There's a little bit of color variation um, but I'm hoping as I apply more coats and uh, because the Areas where the varnish is actually decent as it is, then it won't soak up in as much, but the drier wood will obviously uh, soak up in a lot more. So, now lots to do. Now to get at this area, I'm really hoping this water stain comes out. Uh, if it doesn't, I'm just gonna have to sand it back. But um, as you can see, the wood is uh, old and tired, and it's been a long time since it's seen a lot of good love. So one of the things when I bought this boat was that the engine was not actually running. Uh, it had been sitting for a number of months and the previous owner was not able to get it started anymore. So he had the uh, injectors removed and rebuilt. And when I bought the boat, he had just picked up the injectors, but they were not yet installed. So it was a bit of a risk. I'm uh, hoping that uh, it won't take very much to get it going, but as of yet, it has become a bit of a nemesis for me. I installed all the injectors and uh, bled the uh, system and I didn't have much luck. I replaced the fuel filter, this uh, secondary one here, and this primary one, uh, the Raycor. I changed those out and still didn't have any luck. Had some uh, advice from a friend back in Canada. Uh, Vic guided me through some steps, still didn't have any luck. Then I had a mechanic come out and he spent two hours on it and didn't have any luck getting it started, but I certainly learned a lot. It was definitely worthwhile. Like there are some glow plugs down here that I didn't even know that were there or how they operated. We got that all figured out. Um, but uh, despite that, it still didn't start. It was very slow cranking. Uh, so we tested the batteries, did a load test on the battery, and the mechanic even took the uh, battery out of his dinghy and connected it directly to the engine just to make sure that there was any uh, issues that way. 
and still no luck and it's still cranked rather slowly very similar as if you had a low battery but there are two really large 8d batteries there we had them both functioning uh, for trying to start it plus that third um, battery and no luck so now uh, i've taken out the starter and had it rebuilt so i'm just about to put it back in it's all nice and shiny and hopefully then this would give us enough cranking speed that everything else should now be good hopefully i'll try and glow plugs first for a bit give them about 30 seconds to warm that up i've also got the uh, fuel assist pump on to try to pressurize the fuel system before we start it uh, that should help the uh, actual lift pump uh, initially. So I also have the seacock closed at the moment as the mechanic mentioned that I could uh, at low speed actually uh, inadvertently pump seawater into the engine as opposed to out. So uh, I have to, if the engine were to actually start, I need to run away right away and open that seacock to make sure I have cooling for the engine. Well, finally, Well, that attempt went nowhere really quickly. Um, after a little bit of digging and kind of getting out the voltmeter, I wasn't getting power up by the uh, helm station at all, and I couldn't figure out if I'd blown a fuse, so I checked a couple fuses. Um, but yeah, typical in old fashion, I uh, apparently forgot to connect a wire. Mm. Okay, trying this again. Gonna do the glow plugs for a bit. I have the uh, lift pump going on again. Shouldn't be necessary anymore, but <sighs> I guess uh, here goes nothing. Hopefully, it cranks over a bit faster. <laughs> Thanks everyone for watching the episode. I'm going to keep producing a several a week until I get caught up, so uh, stay tuned. And if you like what you're watching, just hit the like and subscribe button. And don't forget, hit that ship's bell if you want to be notified when new episodes come up. Thanks very much. Have a great day. Still recording? Ah, no record. Um, is the... <laughs>